بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد فعن واثلة بن الاصقع قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تذهر الشماتة لاخيك فيرحمه الله ويبتليك رواه الترمذي الحمد لله brothers and sisters we are continuing with these 40 ahadith, prophetic principles on life. And as we mentioned, each of these principles is a rule by which we live by. And I had mentioned, somebody asked me on what, what's the reason that I com compiled these ahadith. So I was always thinking about, you know, when we are raised, there are certain manners and certain teachings that we are brought up with. But what I realized is a lot of the problems that we have in our lives and the problems that we have in our relationships, a lot of it comes from not knowing what are the principles for life. And I think a lot of high schools, they go through you know, this entire curriculum and not a single subject is taught about life skills. I think now they're bringing certain life skills, but those life skills are only related to what? Getting a job, finding employment, or having a career. There's no life principles on how should I be a good human being? How should I be a good father? How should I, should I be a good brother? How should I be a good citizen, a good human being? Because this is something that the Western world and the secular is not concerned about. And this is the most beautiful thing about our deen, brothers and sisters. A lot of us think, okay, deen, just do away with it and, you know, bigam shawi. Just be, be done with it, and you just be completely, you know, done with it. But the reality of it is, we don't know what is the consequence of when we abandon deen from our lives. What is the consequence of when we abandon deen, and it goes out of the lives of our children? Natiji as ichiyas. What's the end result? The end result is that these things that only the deen teaches us, you will not get that in school. You will not get that in high school. Where in high school or in college are you taught that when your mother and father reach the old age, it is the greatest reward and it is paradise for you to look after them? This world, this generation and this culture, it teaches what? It teaches that when they reach that old age, I don't know you. You brought me in this world, I'm 18 years old, khudafiz, bye bye. And if they're very, very nice to you, maybe they'll write a check and put you in a nursing home. But never does that thought come in their mind that it is my responsibility and it is the greatest ajr for me to take care of my elders. Where does this idea come from? It doesn't come from the West. It doesn't come from the secular teachings. It only comes from faith. Only the people who have faith, only the people who have Islam and Iman, they understand this virtue. So there is, there is there's principles of life, there's rules for life that the Prophet ﷺ came with. The objective and the purpose of these 40 ahadith is to teach us what are the rules of life? What are the principles of life? Somebody was getting in a lot of marriage problems, so then they told me, I wish I took a marriage class before I got married. I said, there's no such thing as marriage class before married. You don't go into marriage knowing how to be a good husband. And you don't know before going in the marriage how to be a good wife. But what we see in the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, and this is another thing, brothers and sisters, it, it breaks my heart. From the religion, from our deen, we only know a very small fraction. The akhlaq and the, and the adab and the principles for life, we have neglected that, we have forgotten that. How much we know about our deen? Awal kalima, duom, namaz, seum, roza, charum, zakat, panjum, haj, khane, kabe, sharifa. These are the five things. Kalima, salat, saum, haj. Is, am I right or wrong? This is. And the one who completes this, he's like the perfect. He's the perfect haji said. But where's the akhlaq? Where's the adab? Where's the, 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 the respect? Where is the, the honor? Where is the etiquettes of life? 
This aspect is the thing that's missing most. And that is why, brothers and sisters, we only have just a fraction of it we're holding on to. That is why the objective of these 40 ahadith is principles for life. From the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tonight we read Surah An-Nur. Surah An-Nur is the adab of life. So many things, right? That when you enter into someone's house or you enter into a room, then you should seek permission before entering into the room. Adab al-Mu'ashirat. Adab al-Mu'ashirat is part of our deen. Right? But now you see the people, the same people that are pray five times a day or they fasting and doing all of these things, they're completely void of adab al-Mu'ashirat. They will not hesitate. They look at their own convenience and they forget about the disturbance of other people. With that being said, we said that this book is divided into four sections. The first section is that which relates to the, the adab of the self. What are the principles of life about your own self? The second section, that which relates to the adab with others. And the third section, that which relates to your perspective on this world. And the last section is that which relates to your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So with that being said now, number 15. Wathilat ibn al-Asqa radiyallahu anhu, he mentions that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا تذهر الشماتة لأخيك This is a very important principle of life. And when we read the hadith, you have to understand that what we are being asked to do is the opposite of this. لا تذهر الشماتة لأخيك Do not express happiness on the loss of someone else. Look at what the Prophet ﷺ is teaching us. Don't become happy because of the loss of someone else. Somebody else lost their job. Somebody else got in an accident. Somebody else became sick. Somebody else got divorced. Do not show happiness. Even in your heart, don't be happy. Khubishat kishat. Wala, you know, you get happy that someone else suffered. This is a very dangerous sign. It's a red flag for the iman of a person. La tudhir shamatati la akhik. Never ever express the joy for the suffering of somebody else. Why? For what? Now listen to the danger part. Because it might be that Allah will save him from his calamity and Allah will put you in that same problem. Subhanallah. What you wish for others, if you wish evil for others, you will fall into that evil. If you dig a hole for your brother, you will fall in that hole yourself. Remember what we said in the previous nights, what goes around comes around. However we want the world to treat us, that is how we should treat the people. You, wanna, you want zulm to be done on you, then do zulm on others. You want hurt to be done on you, then hurt others. You want to be cheated, then cheat others. Whatever you want for others, this is how you should be. Do unto others as you would want others to do unto you. The golden rule. This is the golden rule. This is the akhlaq and the adab of Islam. And this, what the Prophet ﷺ is telling us, is something very, very dangerous. It's teaching us that one thing that we must always have is what? Is an-nusuh li kulli muslim. And this is the reality of Islam. In one hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, ad-deenun nasiha. Ad-deenun nasiha. Deen is nasiha. Nasiha in Arabic just doesn't mean like the nasihat in Urdu and Farsi. Nasihat, mam nasiatit mekunam. This is not that. The Arabic nasiha means another thing. Arabic nasiha means khair khahi. Khair khahi. Ad-deen an nasiha. Yani deen sarasar khair khahi. Subhamagi. The reality of deen is what? That you want, you wish well for other people. Deen sarasar khair khahi. The Prophet ﷺ, when he defined the deen, he didn't say, ad-deen namaz, ad-deen zakat, ad-deen hajj. Yes, that's there. But look at the word that he used. Ad-deen an nasiha Deen in totality with your relationship with others is what? Is that you wish well for everyone. Goodwill towards everyone. So now imagine that if this is the deen, if you have ill will towards anyone, you are not a complete Muslim. 
If you have ill will for anyone, you are not a complete Muslim because when the Prophet ﷺ has defined the definition, the definition of deen, he has defined it as an nasiha khair khayi, wishing well for others. And how can this be wishing well? When somebody suffers, then you become happy. When somebody loses their job, you become happy. When somebody becomes sick, you become happy. This cannot be. And this is a sign of what? This is a sign of nifaq. This is not a sign of iman. And at all times, what we said with these adab, we should be checking ourselves. Put your eye and look into your own heart. Introspection, reflection. Look at your own self. Okay, how, how am I becoming a better person? How is my deen making me a better person? If my deen is not making me a better person, it's not working for me. You know when, it, when you go and you buy this phone, the phone is supposed to have this function. It's supposed to make phone calls. It's supposed to have internet, Wi-Fi. It's supposed to do this, this. If my phone doesn't do that, my phone is not working. I must return it or I must fix it. Our deen is supposed to make us good people. Your deen is supposed to make you a good human being. Your deen is supposed to make you a person who is rahmah. What did Allah Ta'ala say about our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We did not send you but a mercy for all of the worlds. These are, this is our deen, but what if we're just holding on to a few easy things. It's very easy to do these things. But the hardest thing is to not have grudge in your heart. The hardest thing is to humble yourself. The hardest thing is to not, to not fight, to not argue. The hardest thing is to, right, kill your nafs. And when somebody that you don't like suffers, you say, no, I don't wish that for my worst enemy. May Allah guide him. May Allah help him. May Allah guide him. This is the well-wishing that you should have. And this is the sign of the people of Jannah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the people of Jannah, how does he describe it in the Quran? وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مِنْ غِلْ إِخْوَانًا عَلَى سُرُرٍ متقابلين. Allah Ta'ala says that the people of Jannah نَزَعْنَا مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مِنْ غِلْ Allah Ta'ala says that before they enter into Jannah, the people of Jannah are people who have no kina in their hearts. كَسَانِ أَسْتَنْ كَخُدَا أَسْ قَلْبَهَيْشَانْ كِينَ رَكَشِيدَ أَهْلَ جَنَّةَ كِينَ نَدَرَنْ دَلْ قَلْبِشَانْ these are the people of Jannah, actually. They are, and the, the people who are without kina in Jannah is because they had, didn't have kina in this world. Kina is grudge. Kina is hate. Kina is plotting against another person. The first thing when you wake up in the morning, you know, wake up in the morning and the first thing that comes to your mind, who am I going to fight? Who am I going to put you know, to argument? Kira jang partum, you know, who should I fight? Who should I argue with? Who should I, you know, cause a fitna? These are the people who are what? They are the people, they are, these are the shayateen. And the people of Jannah are those who have removed this from their hearts. And here, this is a principle. This is a principle of life that we should have towards everyone, khair khai, no matter what. Muslim. When the Prophet ﷺ would take bayat from the Sahaba, you know, when the Sahaba would come, they said, Ya Rasulullah, Nashhadu Allah ilaha illallah, wa nashhadu annaka Rasulullah. We want to take bayat at your hand. When they would do that, the Prophet would make a condition, a shart. What was the shart? That kulli Muslim. You must make a promise to me that you will be a well wisher for every Muslim. No matter what, any Muslim that comes my way, I want what I want for myself, I want for him as well. This is not easy. This is very difficult. That you love for your brother what you love for yourself. This is Iman. This is Islam. And brothers and sisters, when we see the condition of Muslims in the world, why are we suffering everywhere? Because we don't have this. This has left our hearts. This has left our culture. This has left our practice of religion. You know when Trump, he came out with the Muslim ban. Trump, he came with the Muslim ban. So those people 
who are not Muslim, they don't believe in your religion, they were going out with banners, they said, we are Muslim too. If you're going to kick out the Muslims, then you have to kick us out too. The Muslims are also part of this country. Now let me ask you everybody, if there was an announcement in a Muslim country that said, we're going to kick out all the Sikhs from this country, do you think that people will be in the streets holding up banners? Bekash in duara. Megoftan yane. Asta, u bechara chikadan. But imagine, here in this country, the Muslim ban, you have non-Muslims with the banners, we are also Muslim. Would you imagine any Muslim would have the same courtesy? That's a human being. Would you do that? Would you go and stand with the banners? No, these are our Afghan brothers. Or these are our, you know, uh, uh, countrymen these are our countrymen we are standing you know we're standing for them they have the same rights that we do we don't have this that rahma is gone that rahma is gone and with that being said this, again we are talking about the people of the people of Jannah one time the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he was sitting in Masjid Nabawi and he said, the next person who is going to come from this door, he is from the people of Jannah. So the Sahaba, they're looking to the door, and one man comes. He had just made wudu, the water is dripping from his beard, and he's holding his sandals in his hand, and he comes and sits, and that was Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas. And then the next day, he said, the next person who walks from the door of the masjid, he is from the people of Jannah. And this happened three days in a row. So the Sahabi who's narrating this hadith, I think it was Abdullah ibn Umar. Abdullah ibn Umar said, he said, I have to find out why is this person from the people of Jannah? I have to find out because I want to do the same thing. So what he did, he followed him. He said, uh, Saad bin Abi Waqqas, I'm Maimonet Astum Barasiruz. So, you know, subhanAllah, they were... He said, I'm your, your guest for three days. He said, okay. He said, there was a problem I had. I, I need to stay with you. He said, okay. Ahlan wa sahlan. So he stayed. He stayed with them. He said, the whole night, he said, I didn't notice him doing any extra worship. He wasn't praying Qiyamul Layl or Tahajjud. He wasn't doing extra Quran or extra Zikr or extra Tilawat. I didn't notice anything about him. One day passes. Two day passes. Three day passes. He said, okay. Jazakallah khair, you know, Shaykh, I, I have to go now. And then while he was going, he said, I have to tell you, I wasn't staying with you because of some problem that I had, I have to tell you the truth. The truth is that this is what the Prophet ﷺ said about you. He said, you are from the people of Jannah. And I wanted to know what special action you are doing so that I can do it as well. And i be honest, I did not see anything special in you and I just don't know what it is. Can you tell me what is it? There must be something. He said, I don't know, whatever you saw, that's that. I don't know. The Prophet ﷺ said that I'm, I'm not worthy. I'm not deserving of this. So then Abdullah ibn Umar, he walked away. And while he was walking away, Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas said, Oh, now I know. Yes, come back. He said, what is that? He said, before I go to sleep, if I have anything in my heart or grudge against anyone, I take that out of my heart. And I know that this is not an easy thing. But Allah Ta'ala has given me this. That I, ha I try to have in my heart goodness towards everyone. And this is the most difficult thing. And then Abdullah ibn Umar, listen to what he says. He said, this is the thing that you are doing that we cannot do. This is that thing that you are doing that we are unable to do. And this is why you have received this maqam in paradise. My dear brothers and sisters, may Allah give us tawfiq and enable us to implement this, that we have a clean heart to our brothers and Muslims. Safa'ul qalb. Safa'i qalb is from the, peop, from the actions of the people of Jannah. And how do we attain safa'i qalb? Safa'i qalb is attained by working on yourself. Today, we're worried about what other people do, but we're not worried about what we are doing. 
If you're constantly, you scrutinize yourself, you investigate yourself. Today, we investigate other people. We talk about other people. We make ghibat of other people. We backbite other people. And they said, oh, it's okay. You know, you can backbite people as long as... No, no, it's not okay. We, what, what are we doing? We are looking at others and we see the speck in the eye of somebody else and we don't see the log that is wedged in our own eye. We see the speck on a person's clothes, but we don't see the filth that we are covered with. The way that you attain safai qalb is what? Is always check yourself. Always investigate yourself before investigating others. And if you are in this constant checking, that you're checking your own character, your own akhlaq, you're taking account of yourself, you're taking hisab of yourself, inshallah you will become a person, you will not be concerned about other people. When you're worried about your own self, you will not be worried about others. The biggest problem that we have today is, we are worried about other people, and that is why we have forgotten about ourselves. We are making ghibat of other people, and you should make ghibat of yourself. Sometimes make ghibat of your own self. This is halal. This is not only halal, it's very, very good. It's sawab. It's reward. Make ghibat of yourself. Okay, I need to fix myself in doing this. I have an anger problem. I have a jealousy problem. I have a hatred problem. Right? I have this, I have that. If we check ourselves and then slowly work on removing those things from ourselves, like that we become a better person. Like this Saad bin Abi Waqas, before he goes to sleep, he's thinking about all of the people or all of them. He said, I forgive them from my heart. It's not easy. But this is the way, inshallah, if we have this, right? People who live with grudge, brothers and sisters, the people who live with grudge, they're hurting themselves. Some of the sheikhs, they have said, the grudge is like a burning coal. You know a coal? Burning ember. Grudge and having hatred in your heart is like a burning coal. If you hold it in your hand, it burns you. And if you throw it at somebody else, it will burn them. So the best thing to do is leave it. Don't hold it in your heart because it will burn you. Some people get old very fast. And the reason is, is because they're holding all these negative thoughts. Negative, constant negative, 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 negative. Negative about myself, negative about my parents, negative about people. No, filani taras, bistani taras. Negative about Allah. Negative about Allah. Allah is subhanAllah, rahmah. He's rahmah even though we don't understand what it is. But negative, negative, negative. That is why we're in the situation that we're in. Remove the negativity. Keep your heart pure. And then you see, subhanAllah, purity is on your way. When you are pure, when you think pure, when you have in your heart purity, what happens? SubhanAllah, the way is, the way is the, all the darkness is removed from your path. But the more we become negative, the more darkness upon darkness. And nothing goes right. Because this is, it's the negativity in our lives. It's that burning ember. It burns you. That negativity burns you. And then you, sometimes what do we do? We throw it at somebody else. That we torture our loved ones, our children. We torture them with our negativity. Some parents, they torture their kids with the negativity. Some wives torture their husbands. Some husbands torture their wives. All that negativity, they're throwing it on somebody else. So they're burning themselves. And then after that, they're burning the people around them. They're burning their children around them. They're burning their loved ones. But those people are their loved ones. They're not their enemies. But they're treating them like that. So brothers and sisters, these are the principles of life. Wallahi, if we follow these prophetic principles, your life, this dunya itself will become happy. It will become jannah. But if we don't have these principles of life, usul is in the na fami dem ni khud dunya dozakh me garda. Shair me gakhe gar giriftar e sifat e badshudi ham tu dozakh ham azab e sarmadi. Bishnu ke shair chime ga. He says gar giriftar e sifat e badshudi. If you become taken by your evil qualities, gar giriftar e sifat e badshudi. If you become right incarcerated. You become trapped by your evil habits. Then what happens? Ham tu dozakh, ham azab e sarmadi. Khud dozakh me gardi. Khud azab asti, ba khud azab asti, ba digar azab asti. You become hell. 
when you have these bad habits. You become a punishment on yourself and you become a punishment upon others when you have these evil habits. Isifat al-Badabat as bain bubari. Gar giriftar isifat al-Badshudi. Ham tu dozakh, ham azab sarmadi. You get rid of these habits and then this world will become opposite. Right? It will become opposite. If you become the embodiment of the prophetic character, mercy, shafaqat, rahmat, right? Akhlaq, you know, hamdardi, all of these beautiful qualities, then what happens? Then this is where the, this dunya itself becomes jannah. You make this world jannah before you go to that jannah. Why did the people of jannah go to jannah? Does anybody know? Why did the people of Jannah, they go to Jannah? Because they have the character of the people of Jannah in this world. What's the character of the people of Jannah? Allah says, وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مِنْ غِلْ We have taken away from the hearts of the people of Jannah all evil, all grudge. إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Allah Ta'ala talks about the people of Paradise. They are people with قَلْبِ salim. Their hearts are completely salim, salim, sound of all of the diseases of the heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this understanding. Wa akhiru dawana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanakallahumihamdika nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiru wa ta'ala.